morning how is everyone today sorry I hope that wasn't too in your face <laughs> anyway let's give the laptop time to catch up hmm. caught up faster than I thought okay so I'm trying some new lights here trying to figure out what looks best hold on let me open the curtain a little bit since it's so nice and sunny out and that should help. How is everyone? Okay, let's see if that's any better. A little better I think. Yeah, it's a little better. Sorry the lights are blaring right there. Hmm, what can I do with that? Don't know. Let's see if it's any better up here. Nope, it doesn't help. Okay, so we'll just leave them like that. All right. So, hope you can all hear me. Today is a part two of last week's class. So you can watch them in any order, it doesn't matter. And this is the thin cut that we're using, which you can't see yet. So let's pull it into frame and these are all the bits and pieces that I had from last week and this week so you can cut these thin cuts out of anything I mean you can cut them out of vellum you can cut them out of sparkly paper um, holographic paper that kind of thing and the item number if you would like these is Z34 no Z4324 and they are the layered flowers. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick those up there. And we are dealing with cardstock and pattern paper for this first one. So I used this one, thin cut. Cut all my fingernails off and I can't get anything. <laughs> and this one, okay? Which is the leaf, yes, I know. So I cut one of these out and I cut one of these out out of textured paper, which is the mulberry. We're using shortbread and mulberry. And I cut my leaf out of mulberry um, as you grow paper pack, which is in the core catalog. Pattern paper. Okay, get rid of those. So this first thing I want to show you is last week I had told you that you could just simply layer these by cutting them. So I am going to cut that in half. Now there's a little bit of a little scrappy edge there. So I just take my scissors. On this side it's easy to see, this side isn't. So it's easier just to turn it over. Hint number one today. This one doesn't matter because we're going underneath of it. So I know that I'm going to layer this on top of here, okay? So I kind of wanted to make a cornflower, if you will. And this shape just absolutely gives me the cornflower shape that I'm looking for. Look at that. Okay? Isn't that cool? Okay, so what to do with this? We are gonna need a couple of adhesives, a tape runner adhesive and a liquid adhesive. You always gotta have your scissors that, that are, um, I can't think of the word now, um, coated. I can't think of it. They're coated so that won't work. So, these are a couple of our tools with the little pads on them that you can interchange. So mulberry first. I know that I'm gluing from here to here, so I only need that top part, okay? And then I also thought it would be fun, and it's easier to do it when it's like this, to go around and give a little bit of edging to these flowers, okay? like so, and this one just really on the tips because it's going to be underneath, like so, 
so. And then I thought, well, it'd be nice to have a little around the little cut area there. So I kind of did that, you know, can always add, just have to know when to stop. And then I smudged it a little bit. So then I had to kind of go around on the ends and give them a little bit. So coming at it is going to be better than going down over across the whole thing because you don't have to eat the whole thing. And it's always best to start with a light touch. You're only going to see these edges. So there we go. All right. That was mulberry. And see how much more defined it is now? You can really see the petals and stuff. Add a little bit more right there. That one didn't get very much. Okay. So then, let's move all this out of the way. Then I'm going to go to shortbread because we're putting white on white. Mm, not so good. So we're going to do our shortbread. And I want to do the center, but I'm going to show you the edges first. You can either flick it like that, or you can drag it to get a little softer look and a little more on the paper. Let me see if I can show you. So when you do this, depending on how far you lean in is where you get the edge. And when you do this, it's just a softer so it's stronger like this, depending on how much ink you have. And then it's lighter like that. Okay. So that already looks better. But we're going to do a little more. We're going to start in the middle because that's mostly going to be covered up. So that way we don't get a harsh circle like that. If you push too hard, you can get an awesome looking moon. But we don't want that. So we're going to start in the middle and we're just going to spread it out and by starting in the middle basically we're just working this ink into the into the fibers of the paper so the more that you do it the better it blends and I know I want a lot at the top and the bottom because that's oh try not to do that <laughs> and um, because that's never a good thing And we're just sponging. It's always fun to have a sponge day. Okay, good enough, I think. And this is a light color, so if I had a darker color, I'd have to be a little bit more careful because you would definitely get a stronger look. Okay, so see how that just adds a little bit to it? Okay, let's get rid of those. We got lots more to show you. So then, how we put this together. I am going to take that. And let me think. How is the best way to do this? I am going to put a little bit of liquid glue around all these little openings, if you will. Okay. Sit down, and this is a new one, so it comes out a lot. I like this one here, it's the um, Tombow uh, Mono Liquid Glue because it's white when it comes out and it dries clear, and it's a good bond. And it's got a, a pretty fine nozzle for the um, tip, and then there's a bigger one on the bottom. See, that's a much bigger hole and a bigger broader for doing more things. So then I'm going to take this and I want to, oh, there again, line these two up. Also with the liquid glue, you have a little bit of time to line them up like so. We're just going to press gently. Okay. Give that a second to dry. Put our lid on. Ooh, I told you that was a new glue. Let me get rid of that. Um, now, let's take this and put some adhesive on there. And we know that we're coming up to that top 
part and look at how that just hides under there okay now we can put adhesive on here but first I want to do a little something else let me see I'm looking for a tool that's pretty flat right now so I want to take my bone folder and just I'm gonna hang on tight here so that way I can kind of curl stuff here And just kind of, you know, daisies don't all look the same, and they're out in nature, and one piece might be tilted more than another. And I got a nice line in here, so let's fix that if we can. And it doesn't matter. Okay. So see how that just kind of gives it a little bit of up and down? Now, if I want a little more of that, I'm going to get my foam tape, and this is a thin. There's a thin and a thick, so this one is really thin for mailing is good and for just layering stuff up. So I'm going to take some little itty-bitty pieces, and then I'm going to get my favorite tool, which is my piercing tool. And I just want to, in between these two leaves, lift them up. Oops, helps if you put the right side down. So I'm gonna put some on there, pull off the other side, and stick it down. Still got one on my thumb. So I'm gonna go over here, so it's a nice big one. Put it down, and that'll help hold on the paper too. So that just gives me a little bit of definition, okay? So now I'm gonna put some more glue on this leaf. You want it to stick since you don't have too many places that it's sticking. And then we're going to put it in the middle of here. Like so. Isn't that pretty? And to think we just started with a flat flower and a leaf. So What's the card that I made to go along with that? You might be asking. Well, here is card number one. This is the As You Grow paper pack again. And I just added some dots, and then you can put whatever words you want in down here. So I just left it blank for, I don't know what I'll use it for. So that's card number one. I'll put that in my box for later. I'm going to set this over here. <clears throat> card number two all right what are we using today we're using some water we're using some of this plastic best way i can describe it is that it's a plastic um it's a glossy acrylic spray it's think of it as plastic when it dries if it's wet it's okay you can wipe it off comes off your hands fine a little soap and water um, and some of these, you can see it's kind of white down here. You really need to shake them a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And these two do not have the little... Oop. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. I did not put the lid on. <laughs> Don't do that. Wipe up whatever you need to. Look at how pretty that is. <laughs> this one has just been giving me fits today. <laughs> One thing it does say is when you're done to um, wipe off your nozzle. Also helps to put the lid on all the way before you get started, but I am human. Okay, there, now you can hear that. It's kind of like a paintball, right? And look it, now I'm all yucky. So I am going to show you what we do with that. This is just a wet rag. And most of it will come off because it's still fairly new. If it doesn't, I found out that our stamp cleaner works great for us too. So a couple sprays, whirl it around, get it where you need it, and clean up. <laughs> so there we go. All right. That's an extra bonus tip. <laughs> Stamp cleaner. All right, I am gonna get rid of this, this yuckiness and this so it doesn't affect anything else today. 
don't you know? All right, shall we start again? No. You know, accidents happen. I am human. <laughs> Which is probably you're liking that. All right, so I'm going to, instead of bring out my, um, my all-purpose mat, I am going to bring in a box because we are spraying. If I was doing something that wasn't spray, I could use my all-purpose mat and wipe it off. Oh, let me grab another paper towel. I'm sure today I will need it. All right, what are we talking about today? We are going to use a piece of vellum, okay? And this dries pretty quickly. I was, I was quite surprised. Let me see, what color did I do? I did all these, okay, I did all three. So, a couple ways you can use it. So this is the little nozzle part that you're supposed to wipe off every time. If it gets clogged, you can, one, you can put a, a pin through it, and two, you can take all this inner part and just soak it in hot water. So the further back you are, the more it's gonna dilute the spray, the more you pump and stuff, it's gonna give you some different looks. Okay. Hopefully you can see that on the vellum. Now, whoa, what I found out, oop, there I am. Okay, wipe off your nozzle. I even get my paper towel wet a little bit, so that way I can make sure that nozzle stays nice and clean. Okay, one, all right, so see, it's curling up on me, right? So what do we wanna do? We wanna dry it in between. And you really don't want that to curl up anymore. So as you dry it, it's going to flatten out your vellum, which is really nice. See, it's already flattening. And it's kind of nice to build the colors up by drying each one in between. And it doesn't take that long um, to dry on its own. I, I was quite surprised at just how quickly it did dry. But again, remember, once it's dry, it is permanent and it is plastic. Okay? So it curled up on that side, so I'm just going to go to the back side, straighten it out, and make sure everything is dry. Okay? Which it looks like it's pretty dry. All right. We got a little curling going on. That's okay. We're going we're gonna to punch something out of this anyway. Okay? So there's number one. And then I like to turn it as I go around so I get a different, different area each time okay so a little pump will get you some bigger dots and the spray gets you a full spray pump gets you some more and again I'm just gonna be extra cautious to make sure I wipe off that nozzle really good so it doesn't get stuck okay next one Ugh. I don't know I love this one this is the Guilt? Guilt? I don't I don't know how to say that. Anyway. Oh, and this one is clogged. Ooh. Yep, this one's clogged. So that's okay. I don't have time to do the hot water because we're on here. So I'm oh, and I forgot to dry the other one in between. Doggone it. Hold on a minute. Let's go back to drying. Although it'd probably be fine, but this is how I did it before, so I want to make sure that I show you the same thing. And like I said, it really doesn't take that long to dry. You could probably layer all three of them together. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. We're getting some major curls. I did a smaller piece before. So let's uncurl it. Put it to this side if you need to. I got tough fingers, but this does get really hot. So you want to um, dog on it. Of course, on camera, right? You want to... Um, Maybe I will just use like your scissors, anything, just so your fingers are not in the way. Okay, so straighten back out and try not to hold it too close because you know, okay, that's a little better. Now we're going to take our gold, and since our spray's not working, that's okay. We'll clean it up when we're done. Ooh, that's a big drop. I don't want that big a drop. So then you can go in and you can do some lines, some dots. You can dip it in a bigger dot. You can just, 
just play with it. Go over here and grab some more. There we go. Okay, let me put the lid on. Get something to wipe my fingers. Something to hold it down. And we're drying again. Well, you can almost see that puddle drying. Now let's see. Ooh, that's just water. We're fine. <laughs> no worries. Boy, I am just having a... You know, there's those days you just shouldn't get out of bed. I think this is one. Let's try that. There. There. Okay, now you can watch that big old glob dry before your eyes. Maybe. Try not to hit my handle with my scissors. Come on, you dry. It is a pretty big drop. I love this color though. It is so pretty. It just adds so much to everything. And that spot does not want to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and kind of smoosh it onto the paper. And dry it from the back side. Ooh, hot. <laughs> that is hot. And I don't know if it's because I got a lot of like little spray there that it's deciding to curl up. Hopefully that doesn't get stuck there. So let's finish drying it over here. Okay, we're almost done. Sorry for the long delay, but I want to be able to show you the next step. Ooh, that's kind of cool what we got. Okay, I think that's dry. All right, all done with that. And... Yes, I'll still use the box, but I think I'm going to turn it around to a little bit cleaner side. So now, this is what it looks like. And you could just use it like that. It's very cool. Very spacey to me. But I'm going to turn it over, okay? And I'm going to use a different product than those plastic sprays. I'm going to use the Peacock Feathers um, Distress Oxide, okay? Just from the ink to the paper. And I'm just going to put some ink down, like so, not over the whole thing, doesn't need to be solid, and, and then I'm going to take my spray bottle, I'm just going to give it some sprays. One, it will move the ink around, and two, it will give us some more texture. Oh, I lied. Now, by doing this on the back, you'll see why in a minute when I get it dried. Um, it, it, the oxide ink is a different ink. And one, by doing it on the back side, you've got a softer color. And two, by doing it on the back side, it's prettier coming through to the front than it is if you just look at the back. And I'll show you that in a minute. As soon as I get this dry. Sorry, I know, I'm waiting for paint to dry, right? But we need it dry to continue. Okay. And I think I will cut something out today, just so you can see the difference. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's see. There's still a little bit of wet right there and right there. This is a nice, quiet embossing gun. Just getting down to where I can see where the wet is. And I think you would need to heat this up. I don't think, I think the plastic would dry on its own. I know the plastic would dry on its own. I don't know if this ink would. Maybe over days and days and days because the, um, the vellum doesn't let it soak in like paper does. Still got a little bit. Okay, 
So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn it over and get it from this side. So see how much prettier it is on that side? I'm just going to hurry it up a little bit. Get my box out of the way. Clean up my fingers. Okay. So I don't know if you could tell. Sorry, I dropped my box. But this side is much prettier than this side. And it's still not quite dry. Okay. So it just, it adds and builds. And it is what it is. It's really pretty, right? Okay, so, and I don't think I'm gonna, because this is still wet, I'm just gonna set it over there. And I'll show you the one I already did and I already punched out of, but I think that you will get the idea. Let me just make sure I have all that ink off because we're gonna do another card. Okay, so this is the first little piece that I did. Same thing. It looks pretty coming through here. It's not so pretty on there. This one's more dry, so you can see it's just kind of a matte finish, if you will. Where this side, it's a lot darker, and it just, it picks up a lot more of the design of the back, where this looks more flat. Okay, so obviously I punched out a leaf with that. And I wanted to show you the card. Let me see if there's anything else I need to show you for this one. I don't think so. So here's the card I made. I did use the holographic paper, all these little bits around. I did take some lagoon paper and just put the white, the white on of that. And I will hold this up closer. So you can see here that leaf. And hopefully the holographic doesn't get too shiny on you. I'll try and turn it where you can see it. Get really close use my lights how is that okay moving on and I will bring these cards back and show you at the end so that's card number two let me get some of this out of the way and we'll move on to card number three so we don't need any of that all right so oh I wanted to show you here's the vellum if you're interested, Z3367. It's 12 by 12 and you get three sheets. Okay. And the holographic, if you're interested in that, um, you can see, hopefully, yes, it looks kind of gold right now, but it will pick up all different colors when it gets next to it. And I'll try not to get it too much in your, hopefully that's not glaring you like the sun does. Z3636, it's holographic. This is Oasis holographic paper, and there's three sheets, I believe, as well in there. Okay, so stamp sets we are using today is this one is from, this is Stampin' Thin Cut, from the um, Sweetest Honey Card Making Kit. It is Z4406. The only way you can get this stamp set is to buy the um, card kit. But then you have the paper and the cards and the envelopes and everything you need. Okay? Except for your adhesive and your inks. So there's that one. The next one I'm using is a sneak peek at the February stamp of the month. Lots of nice words. S2202. Here's the story. Stamp of the month for February. Now remember, if you're a VIP customer um, you can order $50 and get this for free otherwise if you're um, not I don't want to say just a customer but if you're not a VIP then if you order $50 you can get it for $5 and if you just want it outright it's $18.95 okay next one is D2051 perfectly imperfect patterns and this one is in the core catalog and that means that it will be around until the end of August okay so the colors we are using are black and mink and Sundance and where's my other one? 
and shortbread that we used before. Okay. Oh, here we go. Hold on. I need to see what I used. I'm going to need this paper. And okay. All right. So we have a piece of paper, just white cardstock. And oh, this is the layer that goes on top. So let's start with that and our words and whatnot. So I am going to take the stamp. Normally you stamp with it like this. Gently take it off. I am going to put what you stamp with down, no, up. So I can use the back side. This is the stamp of the month, so it doesn't have thin cuts. So I put it on upside down, okay? Put it on upside down. Ink it up. Put it in the middle of here. Oh, you know what? There's a better way. Hold that thought. Let me wash this off. Let me bring in my washing. Okay. That's right. I learned a better way. Alright, so let's do it like you normally would. Line her up. Get her on your block. And we are going to use black to start. So just ink it up like you normally would. And this is a little easier to see. And put that on there. Okay. With black. Wash it off. Turn. Take it off gently because there's a big hole. You don't want to rip it. Turn it over. The straighter you get it on there, the better off you are. Ink it up in shortbread, and now it's much easier to see where the pattern is because we have, did it in the black. Okay, like so. Isn't that cool? So you just wash it off like you normally would, turn it back over, put it back on the carrier sheet, whatever. Okay. Words, we are going to use, I'm going to go back and forth a little bit here. Words are, oops, in Sundance, and it says, I love you most. Oh, let me show you something. Also, to season your stamps, just rub them on your hand, your palm. Just take the shiny off, and then they stamp better. And there we go. Okay. Also, it's a little thicker line, so I didn't just pull it up right away. I let that ink settle into the um, surface of the paper. Okay? All right. That is that. And that's our title, if you will. And now we are going to make our background. So we're going to get that bigger piece of paper out again. We are going to start with our lighter colors and build our way up. So a little bit different than what I normally do. So this is shortbread, and this is using that one from the catalog. I don't know if you guys can tell, but see how this stamp looks different? Some pieces are lighter, some pieces have more patterns, some pieces are just spotty. This is the coolest stamp because it gives you all of those looks in one stamp, one image. So see how I've got dots, I've got lighter, I've got darker. And I'm just going to use whatever's left and just kind of go around and finish stamping. Now, if you go off the page, you're going to get a line. So make sure that you start again before you go off the page. Or take a layer off and then hit the page. And I like this a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that I ink it up each time so I don't get any lines. It's not fun to get lines. Okay, so there's our first layer, if you will. Clean that off. Moving on. That was shortbread. Now we're going to go to mink. And this is the words out of the um, card kit one. And we're just going to 
randomly put those on, turn the paper, or turn the ink uh, stamp, either way, and we're just going to kind of fill. Okay? I always tend to start in the corner and work my way across. If you go around the edges, then you might have to overlap, which isn't a bad thing for doing this, but sometimes you don't want to overlap. So I think I'll leave it like that for now. Less is more, you can always come back and add another layer of that, okay? The next one we're going to do is Sunset, Sunset, Sundance color. And I got out of the Core Catalog stamp this cute little row of hearts. So again, I'm going to turn the hearts so that way they're going all different directions. Off the page, on the page. Remember to fill in that middle first. Okay. You just want them kind of evenly spaced, all right? Next, same color, Sundance. And this is the little bee trail. So now I'm going to go along. Like I said, you can turn, rotate the stamp, or you can just rotate your paper. Just sometimes a little easier. And I'm going to make sure that I get the middle. Try not to go on top of too much of the hearts because it's the same color. Okay. Like I said, you got to know when to stop. Less is more. We got one more thing to add, so we don't want to do too much. Okay. Stop with that for now. And then we're going to go to the black. And this is the little tiny one. It's the bees. And I thought for kicks and grins, I would just go wherever the little trail was and put in some bees. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. Just follow all the little trails. You can put it on either side. You can put it on both sides. It's your pattern paper, so you can do what you like. Like how I said that? <laughs> I am so funny today, probably only to myself. You can still see I've got glitter on me. I didn't get that part. All right, but it will come off. All right, so now I've hit all of those little trails, but I know that I'm gonna be cutting a flower out of this, so I'm gonna go back and add a little bit here and there just to kind of fill in. See how this half is a little different from this half? It's just a little bit more filled in, mostly around the edges. So I'm just going to do that. And it's kind of like, you got to play with it. You got to, you got to just kind of do it. And every little, every stamp that you pick is going to be a little bit different. I usually tell you, and be really careful when you're using these little ones, because the block can get really wet and you can wipe it right off. And it can either be on your, your cleaning rag or it can fall off all different places. So be real careful with those itty bitties. All right. So now what I did, I need that one again. And this is, I went and I took this one right here, this little flower, and I just went around and, and, and stamped out three of them, okay? You don't need to watch me do that. If you need help with that, ask me later. And then the other one, this flower, I'm gonna use as kind of my leaves. So I went and got some texture paper. So we made our own texture paper, and now I'm gonna use the existing texture paper that is in with the bee, the Sweet As Honey kit, and I am going to, to punch out three of these. Three flowers, three leaves, okay? And this is what's on the other side. All right, and I've already done that to save us some time. So here's what it looks like. You know, just fit them in wherever you like. I tried to get some light spaces, some darker spaces. I tried to get some different areas so that way my my flowers would have different color combinations. Some of them would be lighter, some of them would be darker. Some of the middles would be lighter, some of the middles would be darker. And I came up with one that came out like this. 
and there's really nothing on it. So if that happens, just go back and add whatever little stamp you want. I could come in here and add a little bit of bees. And then I think I want to add a little bit of hearts. And voila. Now we have, and that's the back side. Oh, jeez. Wow. Well, let's try that again. Let's add some hearts. Oh, my goodness. And let's add some bees. It looks better on one side than the other. Um, that's why I went ahead and did that. So, there we go. We just added to it. And that's the back side. You can see it's it's kind of a rougher edge is what it what it does. It gives you a rougher edge compared to this clean, rounded over edge. Okay? Now, I knew that I was using this with this. I was going between the darker and the lighter for the middles and the and the flowers, but I wanted just a little bit more definition. So a little sponge dauber on the black, and basically all you have to do is touch it to it. You don't have to um, do that because you're going to get a whole lot more. So depending on what you want, and there we go. Much more definition, okay, on that flower. So, let me wipe my hands off because they are quite yucky. <laughs> And here is the card that I made using those flowers. And I want to show you one more thing. I always tell you it's great to buy colored bling, but your best option is to buy a lot of the colored bling you like and then buy some that is not colored because you can take our markers and simply color over the top. Like so, let it dry a couple seconds, and you have these centers. And it's nice because it's not a, a true dark, dark black like it looks here. Let me show you on the on the card. It kind of gives you a little bit of a, a color, but then the clear kind of, I don't know, does something. It kind of shines, but it doesn't come through, but it's not that solid matte black like our black dots. So I also went around with the sponge dauber and I hit the edges of these leaves because our core paper is white inside. Our paper is white on the inside that I just wanted that to be a little bit more uh, deeper in contrast with the stripe. And this is also in the Sweetest Honey paper. So you can see here, this is a, a darker center with a lighter flower, a lighter center with a darker flower. So these, this is raised up. These are raised up, these are flat, this one's raised up. So it's got some depth to it, but it's just that little foam, really small foam tape, so it doesn't uh, add a lot of bulk. The little pop of uh, sparkle is gonna add more dots, or more, more bulk to your image. There, maybe you can see it that way. So, card number three. Where's my other two? Card number two. Card number one, and there's the clear sparkles that are the same as these. Which one's your favorite? One, two, or three, or all of them. That's fine, too. And I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long for you today, and I hope you'll give it a try. Hey, Dolores, how are you feeling? I hope you're better. Can't wait to see you again. Talk to you soon, everybody. See you next Friday or before. Bye now.